Hi everyone, welcome to this video today where I'm teaching you how to solve a system of equations by graphing. This is one of the three methods we could use for solving a system. There's graphing, substitution, and elimination. And using this method for graphing is always super helpful when you have graph paper available to you, you can, or you can easily sketch a coordinate plane on a piece of paper and graph your equations and see where they intersect. And that's what we're gonna be learning today is that the intersection is everything. That's where your solution is. So first of all, a system means that you're dealing with two or more equations. And right now in algebra one, we just deal with two equations. Later on in Algebra 2, you're going to be dealing with three or more even. So a solution of a system is the ordered pair or pairs that all equations in the system have in common. And the way you're going to see two equations actually have an ordered pair in common is if those two lines actually intersect. And that intersection is an ordered pair that is true for both equations um, in the system. But we're going to see, we know that not all lines intersect each other, right? So that's going to be something that definitely comes up. We've got some terminology here that we need to make sure we understand. We've got consistent and independent, consistent and dependent, and then just inconsistent. So first of all, if I say the word consistent, consistent is going to mean that there is a solution. So let's say I go ahead, I give you a system of equations, we solve the system, and you find that there is a solution. Well, we then refer to it as consistent. And after we say it's consistent, we can then talk about how many solutions there are. So we say a system is consistent and independent if there is simply just one solution. We are going to also learn that you can be consistent and dependent. Consistent still means there's a solution, but dependent is going to mean that there's infinitely many solutions. So I'm going to ask that you kind of like think about it like what would that have to mean for those two lines if there's a solution and there's actually infinitely many solutions and we're going to see that in just a little bit and the last one is inconsistent so think about it if consistent means there is a solution then inconsistent means that there is no solution okay so we're going to take a look at the first case um, first and we're going to take a look at two problems of each of these sets so what consistent and independent looks like what it means to have a system that there is a solution and there's only one solution. So here's our first system. So this first system is y equals 2x minus 1. And I have it color coded in gray and green. Um, so I'm just going to probably change it to red just so it's a little easier to see my graphs. So to graph y equals 2x minus 1, I know I plot my y-intercept at 1, my slope at 2. Okay, so this is also a little review for our graphing skills. So if you have found that you've been a little rusty at graphing, then this is definitely going to be helpful for you. And then we're going to go ahead and connect them to make that line. Okay, then in green, I'm going to go ahead and graph the second equation, y equals negative 3. So we should remember that means on the y-axis at negative 3, it is a horizontal line. Okay, and now I've graphed my system. And so what we should then see is, well, this system has an intersection. Okay, the lines are definitely intersecting. And the point that they intersect at is actually our solution. So these lines are intersecting. My solution is actually the coordinates of this point. And you can see this point is at negative one, negative three. And that is the solution to my system. And what this actually means, negative 1, negative 3, is this solution gives you a true statement for both equations. So if I went ahead and I plugged in um, negative 3 for y and a negative 1 for x, look what's going to happen. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative, one, uh, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. It gives me a true statement. Here, it's just y equals negative 3, so that means I just simply plug in my y value of negative 3, and notice negative 3 is equal to negative 3. It gives me a true statement. This is the only ordered pair that would give me a true statement for both of these equations. Let's take a look at this next one. So now I have y equals x plus 1, so I'm going to just turn the first one into red. So a y-intercept of 1, a slope of 1, we get the point. Sometimes it can be a little tricky making lines. 
That looks good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna graph my green line. So y equals negative x minus three. So I have a y-intercept here at negative three, a slope of negative one. You can already see that these two lines are definitely intersecting each other, which is fantastic. I'm gonna change my line to green. I'm going to graph this line. It goes right through my screen box here. I can clearly see that these two graphs are intersecting each other and the coordinates of that intersection are my solution. So these lines are intersecting. The solution is negative two, negative one. This is what consistent and independent looks like, guys. If I was to substitute negative two and negative one in here, so it's y is negative one, x is negative two, and notice, negative two plus one is negative one. It's a true statement. If I go ahead here and I plug in a negative one for y, and this would be negative, negative two minus three which really means positive two minus three, which is definitely negative one. And that gives us our true statements. Now, the next two problems are gonna be consistent and um, dependent, which means all real solutions. So if I go ahead and I graph this first equation, y equals two x minus one, I have a y-intercept at negative one, a slope of two. This is just like the first graph that we did before. And graph my line. Then I'm going to switch over to green. Now I should notice also here too, guys, 2x minus y equals one is in standard form. I can find my intercepts and graph, or I could rearrange that equation into slope intercept form, which may also help me graph it. So I would need to subtract 2x on both sides and then um, multiply the entire equation by negative one. So I end up getting an equation in slope intercept form. And then I can go ahead and actually graph this equation. So my y-intercept in this equation is negative one. My slope is two. What do we notice? This equation is identical to this equation, okay? And if I go ahead and I make a line of that equation, obviously the lines are going to overlap each other. So every point on the red line corresponds with every point on the green line. And so these lines are exactly the same which means our solution is infinitely many. So any point, obviously, for one equation here is going to be identical if I plug it into the other equation. They're all going to work. You have infinitely many solutions. So this next problem you're going to see follows that same idea. I have my first uh, graph here, y equals negative 2x plus 5. I'm going to put that in red. Okay, so y-intercept of five, a slope of negative two, we get the point. And then when I go ahead and look at my second equation, which is in standard form, if I wanted to rearrange this in slope-intercept form, I would subtract two x, and what I'll notice is this equation is identical to the other equation. I think you get the point for this. I don't need to graph the green line over the red line, and that is, again, infinitely many. So when you have lines that intersect, there is one solution. If they are actually the exact same line, if two equations are the exact same line, that is when they are infinitely many. It's infinitely many solutions. Okay, let's take a look at this one now. So y equals 2x minus 1 and y equals 2x plus 1. Now hopefully, I could only hope um, that you know you learned a very important lesson recently where you learned about slopes. And we can see that these two equations have the same slope. So hopefully you're already thinking about something um, that you know is going to happen with these lines. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over and I'm gonna graph my line through those points. I'm gonna switch over to green and graph my second, a y-intercept of one, a slope of two. Hopefully we see that these lines are definitely parallel and we could tell that they were parallel before we even graphed them because remember parallel lines have the same slope. So if I go ahead and I graph these lines and I see they're clearly parallel, will they ever intersect? No, they won't intersect. And we learn the solution to any system is where lines intersect each other. So if you have two lines and they never intersect, that means there is no solution. And this is when it is inconsistent, okay? We would call this um, system inconsistent. And then the last one is going to be the same exact idea. If I was going to take these two equations and put them into slope-intercept form, 
um, it would be y equals negative 3x plus 4. My second equation would then become y equals negative 3x plus 2. We notice they have the exact same slope. Okay, and then if I make a graph through those points, I go ahead, I plot my second equation with a y-intercept at 2. Okay, and then I connect them. I see I have parallel lines, and if they are parallel, then they have no solution and they are inconsistent. That's it. Those are your three types. They are either intersecting and have one solution, they are overlapping and the exact same line, and so they have infinitely many solutions, or they are parallel and they have no solutions. Thanks for watching. Bye.